Good afternoon. This is uh, Gary Adams with the National Cotton Council, and I'd like to er welcome everyone to this conference call and webinar regarding the recently passed seed cotton program. With the new program taking effect for this year's crop, we felt that it was important to disseminate the information as quickly as possible, and conducting a series of calls and webinars is the best way to do that. Uh, just remind everyone that the conference calls are in lecture mode until after the presentation, and then we will open it up to a uh, question and answer. Uh, I would also add that the presentation is available for download from the uh, National Cotton Council's website, so you can go to www.cotton.org uh, and navigate through the economic section, and you'll find uh, the PowerPoint file as well as the summary document and an Excel spreadsheet that includes uh, uh, the matrices that you'll see in, in the presentation today. By way of background, you'll recall that on February 9th, Congress passed a budget agreement that included supplemental disaster provisions for agriculture. In addition, the legislation included the seed cotton program as well as provisions to improve the safety net for dairy. The seed cotton program represents the culmination of more than two years of concerted effort by the U.S. cotton industry to improve the support program by authorizing cotton's eligibility for the PLC and ARC programs within the 2014 Farm Bill. I want to recognize the diligent efforts of the staff of the National Cotton Council, as well as the numerous cotton industry associations that worked hard to achieve this outcome. Dedicated industry leadership was also critically important in these efforts, and to those I offer my thanks. Achieving this new policy would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of Congressman Mike Conaway, Chairman of the House Agriculture Committee, and Senator Thad Cochran, Chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Uh, the industry is also very grateful for a, a number of Cotton Belt uh, senators and representatives for their support of this policy throughout the process. Before we review the program, let me address the importance of establishing a seed cotton policy in advance of the new Farm Bill and why it was necessary to convert generic acres beginning in 2018 rather than in 2019. Now, cotton producers needed an improved safety net as soon as possible and the Supplemental Disaster Bill was the last legislative vehicle to accomplish that outcome. The Supplemental Disaster Bill also provided an opportunity to add additional baseline funding through the changes for dairy and cotton. Adding new money would not have been possible in the Farm Bill process, and addressing cotton and dairy now will make the upcoming Farm Bill development a bit less difficult. Generic base acres are cotton based from the previous Farm Bill and were intended as a temporary measure to keep some support on those acres until the new cotton policy was implemented in Title I. The conversion of generic base in 2018, one year ahead of the new Farm Bill, helps ensure the budget resources currently associated with generic acres would remain within the new cotton program and with other crops that establish base acres by converting generic base to crop-specific bases. If development of the cotton policy and conversion of generic base occurred in the context of the up upcoming Farm Bill debate, there would have been many more interest involved who would want a portion of the generic base acre payments to go to their priorities instead. I think strengthening the cotton program and converting generic base acres so that all payment acres are now decoupled from plantings should make it easier to defend and maintain the support levels and payment limit provisions that are critically important to agriculture across the cotton belt. With the approval of the provisions for cotton and dairy, the Ag Committees are in a much better position to move forward with development of the new bill. In the upcoming Farm Bill, cotton will be focused on maintaining the seed cotton policy. The industry is also seeking some improvements to the operation of the marketing loan program, enhancements in cotton flow, and increased support for the U.S. textile industry. We anticipate the House Agriculture Committee will try to pass their version of the new Farm Bill out of committee by the end of the first quarter. The Senate Ag Committee is likely to follow shortly after. The committee bills must then be approved by their respective bodies and then work out any differences in a conference. All of this needs to occur by September 30th when some provisions of the existing Farm Bill begin to expire. So there's still much work to be done uh, between now and the expiration of the existing Farm Bill. 
Given the numerous attacks on agricultural policy by outside interest groups from across the political spectrum, it is critical that all of U.S. agriculture work together to defend the Farm Bill. Let me thank you for your participation in the conference call and webinar. I also want to thank those that are hosting groups at your office. Uh, if you will do us a favor, uh, in order for us to have a better idea of the number of people that we reach, I will ask those with, with, that are hosting groups to give us a rough idea of the number at your location by typing the number of attendees into the webinar's chat window. We will take questions at the end of the presentation uh, through the webinar chat window first and then open up the conference lines. If you have any follow-up questions uh, or certainly if you need any additional information after the webinar, you are always welcome to contact your NCC member services representative or contact myself or any of the staff in either the Memphis or the Washington, D.C. office. I'll now introduce Dr. Jody Campici, the Council's Vice President of Economic and Policy Analysis, and she will lead us through today's presentation. So, Jody, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, we'll go over the 2018 seed cotton program information. And just want to mention before I get started, the information presented today is based on our review of the legislative language. Final details are subject to change based on USDA's interpretation of language and implementation. Seed cotton is designated as a covered commodity eligible for Title I PLC and ART programs in the 2014 Farm Bill, beginning with the 2018 crop. Seed cotton refers to ungenned upland cotton that includes both lint and cotton seeds. The reference price is set at 36.7 cents per pound. The price floor is set at 25 cents per pound. The seed cotton marketing your average price is a weighted average of the upland cotton lint price and the cotton seed price. Lint and cotton seed prices are weighted based on annual shares of production. So these shares will change each year. To calculate the price, we take the U.S. upland lint production times the U.S. marketing your average price for lint plus the U.S. cotton seed production times the U.S. cotton seed marketing your average price divided by the total lint and cotton seed production. The seed cotton or the upland cotton lint price and then the cotton seed price are prices that are published by NAS, the National Ag Statistics Service. The marketing year average prices are not final until the end of the marketing year. The marketing year runs from August 1st through July 31st. The final prices generally aren't published until early September, I mean, late September or early October. But USDA does publish monthly estimates throughout the marketing year, and we will be providing the monthly seed cotton marketing year average price estimates on our website along with uh, other information about the seed cotton program. So for an example, let's use an upland cotton lint marketing your average price of 69 cents a pound. A U.S. cotton seed marketing your average price of $150 a ton. So first, we need to convert the U.S. lint production from bales to pounds. We need to convert cotton seed production from tons to pounds because that's how those are reported. We add the two together to get total lint and cotton seed production as measured in pounds. Okay, and then we just work through and, and input the numbers. So we take U.S. lint production times the lint price plus cotton seed production times the cotton seed price divided by total lint and cottonseed production. And if you go down to the very bottom, we end up with the shares of production. So you'll see lint would be 0.4233 times 69 cents plus 0.5767 for cottonseed times $150 a ton or 0.075 cents. We get a 2017-18 seed cotton marketing year average price estimate of 33.53 cents. And the, the data that's used to calculate this is based on USDA's 
most recent estimates from the February report, but obviously this will change each month as USDA publishes new monthly estimates. So let's just take a look at where so uh, seed cotton prices would have been historically. You can see that the seed cotton price in blue is a combination of the lint price in red and the cotton seed price in brown. So one thing to point out, if you take a look at 2017, you'll see that lint prices increased slightly from 16 to 17, while cotton seed prices declined from 16 to 17. So the overall seed cotton price actually declined as well. Okay, now we'll just walk through uh, an example showing uh, in this spreadsheet where we get the cottonseed marketing average price at different combinations of the lint and cottonseed prices. And I'll just also point out that this spreadsheet is available on our website, so you can go and download it so that you can look at it a little closer when you have more time and the numbers aren't maybe so small. So if uh, we look at the prices that we used previously, a lint marketing average price of $0.69 cents and a cottonseed marketing average price of $150 a ton, you'll see uh, highlighted in red the $0.33 cents that we just calculated. Now, if the lint marketing average price ends up dropping to, say, $0.63, cents, and the cottonseed marketing average price stayed at $150 a ton, we would have a seed cotton marketing average price of about $0.31. Cents. And again, you can do the same thing as you move across the spreadsheet at different levels of a lint price and then a cottonseed marketing average price. The seed cotton payment yield is equal to the lint yield plus the cottonseed yield. And this is also equal to 2.4 times the lint yield. And this is since the cottonseed yield is determined as 1.4 times the lint yield. This conversion factor of 1.4 is consistent with the approach used in crop insurance. The upland cotton lint payment yield is equal to the higher of the CCP lint yield or the updated lint yield. There's a one-time opportunity to update the payment yield for upland cotton based on 90% of the average of 2008 to 2012 actual yields, not counting years in which cotton was not grown. This is consistent with the options available uh, during the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill for other covered commodities. And for a seed cotton payment uh, yield example, let's assume that the cotton lint yield is 800 pounds per acre. Pounds of cotton seed would be 1.4 times 800, or 1,120 pounds per acre. The seed cotton payment yield equals 800 plus 1,120, which would be 1,920 pounds per acre. This is also equal to 2.4 times 800. Seed cotton payment is made when the reference price exceeds the higher of the marketing year average price and the price floor. The seed cotton PLC payment rate is equal to the reference price minus the higher of the marketing year average price and the price floor. The seed cotton payment rate would equal zero if the seed cotton marketing year average price is higher than the reference price of 36.7 cents. The seed cotton PLC payment is paid on 85% of the seed cotton base. So the payment, per, uh, which would be the dollars per base acre, would be the PLC payment rate times the payment yield times 85%. And this is also consistent with PLC payment calculations for other covered commodities in the 2014 Farm Bill. And as an example, we use the seed cotton marketing year average price we calculated earlier, 33.53 cents. So the seed cotton PLC payment rate would be the reference price, 36.7 cents, minus the higher of, 33.53 cents and 25 cents. So we get the payment rate. We're going to multiply that by the 1,920 pounds per acre and multiply it times 85%. 
and we get $51.73 per base acre. Seed cotton base acres are established through the conversion of generic base acres. Generic base acres are not in effect beginning with the 2018 crop. For any farms with generic base and no covered commodities, which includes seed cotton, planted from 2009 through 2016, those generic base acres will become unassigned crop base and ineligible for PLC and ARC. Now, during this time period from 2009 to 2016, if one acre of one covered commodity is planted in one single year between 2009 and 2016, you remain eligible. Now, this eligibility only applies to generic base. It does not affect any existing base, and the existing base for other covered commodities that is currently on a farm will not change. With this, uh, with this addition. It'll just apply to generic base acres. So producers will have a choice between two options to convert generic base acres to seed cotton and other covered commodity base acres. Option one, seed cotton base would be the higher of 2009 to 12 average seed cotton plantings or 80% of generic base and the total cannot exceed total generic base. Any unconverted generic base becomes unassigned crop base and ineligible for PLC or ARP. So just to point out, if your plantings uh, from 9 to 12 are at your level of generic base or higher than your generic base, a producer would not lose any generic base under option one. The 2009 to 12 average seed cotton plantings Again, if they're equal to or higher, would then just be converted to generic base. Under option two, all generic base would be converted proportionally based on 2009 to 2012 average plantings of seed cotton and other covered commodities. Option two is consistent with the option that was available during the 2014 Farm Bill implementation. A producer would choose this option if uh, he or she wanted to gain additional commodity base other than cotton. So if the producer had planted some other commodities from that 9 to 12 time period and wanted to get additional base of some of those commodities, then option two uh, would be the choice. Okay, so let's walk through a couple of examples. Okay, my slides weren't wanting to advance. I have several examples in here, but I'm only going to cover a couple uh, just for time. They're, they're pretty similar. Okay, so total generic base in this example is 500 acres. For 2009 to 2012, average planted acres were cotton, 200 acres, corn, 300 acres, soybeans, 300 acres. So total covered commodities planted from 9 to 12 is 800 acres. Okay, under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres, which is 200, 80% times 500 generic base acres equals 400. So seed cotton base would equal 400. Unassigned base would equal 100. Or option two, allocate 500 acres of generic base to the crops planted between 2009 and 2012. So based on the previous slide, 200 acres of cotton were planted. So we take 200 divided by 800 total covered commodities times 500, we end up with 125 acres of cotton. We do the same for corn and soybeans. We end up with 187.5 corn and soybean acres for total allocated base acres of 500.
Okay, the next example. Total generic base equals 500 acres. 2009 to 12 average planted acres. Cotton is 500. Wheat is 200. Sorghum is 100. We have 800 total acres of covered commodities. Option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres, which is 500. 80% times 500 generic base acres is 400. So seed cotton base will equal 500. Unassigned base will equal zero. Or option two, we allocate those 500 acres of generic base to cotton, wheat, and sorghum. So we do the same thing in the previous example, we planted 500 acres of cotton, so you're going to take 500 divided by the 800 acres planted of covered commodities, multiply that by the 500 generic base acres, and we get 312 acres of cotton, 125 acres of wheat, 62 acres of sorghum. Okay, the next example. Let's say we have 500 acres of generic base. 2009 to 2012 average planted acres are cotton, 600, corn, 200. Total covered commodities would be 800 acres. Option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres, which is 600. 80% times 500 generic base acres is 400. However, seed cotton base cannot be greater than generic base. So the seed cotton base for this option is 500 because it can't be higher than the 500 acres of generic base. Unassigned base would be zero. Or in option two, we allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. Okay, last example, 500 acres of generic base, 2009 to 2012 average planted acres, cotton, 100 acres, corn, 100 acres, and alfalfa, a non-covered crop of 600 acres. So when we add up total covered commodities, we only have 200 acres because we had 100 of corn and 100 of cotton. Okay, under option one, Seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 200. 80% times 500 generic base equals 400. Seed cotton base would be 400. Unassigned base would be 100. Under option two, we can allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. You take the ratio of cotton and corn planted and even though only 200 acres of covered commodities were planted, we still allocate the full 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. So we end up with 250 acres of each. Okay, so I'm going to go through a couple of examples where you'll see the spreadsheet that calculates PLC payments per base acre. We also have this spreadsheet available on our website and you can see the lint payment yield at the top and in this example it's 500 so it's in bold red. You can open this spreadsheet and change that to the payment yield that you want to use and the whole spreadsheet will calculate for you. So in this example the lint payment yield is 500. We multiply that by 2.4. The seed cotton payment yield would be 1200. Now in the examples that we have looked at, we used a lint price of 69 cents and a cotton seed marketing or average price of $150. So you look down the spreadsheet to where those two meet and you'll see in red $32 per base acre. And in this spreadsheet, we've already multiplied the payment rate times the payment yield times 85%. So you do get paid on the full 
cotton payment yield, the 85% is just the last part of that equation where it's 85% of base acres. So you would take the 32 times total base acres. Now, if the price were to be lower, let's say the price was 61 cents, and let's say the cotton seed price was still 150, you can see the payment would change to $67 an acre. And as you scroll across towards the bottom right, you can see uh, combinations of a lint marketing or average price and a cottonseed marketing or average price where the payment would be zero. So for example, look at 75 cents and $180 cottonseed price, you can see a zero payment. So this spreadsheet just kind of helps you look at various payments under different price scenarios. Okay, so the next example we'll look at a lent payment yield of 700. So we take 700 times 2.4 and we get a seed cotton payment yield of 680 pounds. So the same as before, go down to 69 cents for a lent marketing average price on the left, go across the top and you look at $150 cotton seed marketing average price and you can see the payment that's bolded in red, $45 per acre. Again, same thing applies here. Let's say the cotton seed price increases to $200 a ton, but the lint marketing average price drops to $0.65. Cents. You would see the payment would be slightly higher at $49 an acre. Okay, last example, we'll look at a lint payment yield of 1000 so we take 1,000 times 2.4, and you get a 2,400 payment yield. And again, just to reiterate, whenever you open the spreadsheet from our website, the seed cotton payment yield will already calculate for you. You just need to put in your lamp payment yield. So using the 69 cents and $150 cotton seed price, we have a payment of $65 per base acre. Okay, so for other details, for the 2018 crop, the Stacks insurance product may be purchased for acres of upland cotton planted on a farm enrolled in the seed cotton, PLC, and ARC programs. Now keep in mind, Stacks must be purchased prior to the sales closing date, and we are approaching sales closing date. We've already passed the sales closing date for uh, South Texas. Now, in later years, there are restrictions, and the language currently includes that for 2019, if a farm is in PLC or ARC, the farm cannot, cannot be enrolled in stacks. The non-recourse marketing assistance loan for upland cotton lint remains unchanged in the 2014 Farm Bill, with an upland cotton loan rate of 52 cents a pound for the 2018 crop. PLC and ARC payments for seed cotton are subject to the payment limit of 125,000, which applies to other commodities other than peanuts. Now, the examples that we've shown are for the PLC program. We will provide uh, ARC examples on our website, along with other information to help you in making your decisions. Okay, so producer and landowner decisions. Landowners will update payment yields if updated if the updated yield is greater than the CCP yield. Also have to choose between base update options. And I mentioned landowners here because many of you will remember for implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill, it required all landowner signatures. Or it, you could use a power of attorney if you had one that was valid for that purpose. Going forward, you will need to check if you already have a power of attorney or if you need to get one, you'll need to uh, make sure that the power of attorney allows you to, to sign for the landowner. Producers will choose between PLC or ARC. Producers will make a PLC ARC election for the 2018 crop year on each farm with seed cotton base. 
if all producers on a farm fail to make a unanimous election for PLC and ARP, the farm will be assumed to choose PLC for, cotton, or for seed cotton. And just to make sure this is clear, this election is just for the 2018 crop year. Now, as far as the, the yield update and the base update options, we do anticipate that those selections would carry forward to the next farm bill. But looking into the next farm bill, the actual PLC ARC election, we're not sure exactly what, how that will work after the 2018 crop year. Okay, so for the next steps, you need to gather similar information used during implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. Yield records from 2008 to 2012. Planning history from 2009 to 2012. FSA has not announced a sign-up date at this time, and the FSA offices are not ready for you to come in and make these decisions yet. So at the appropriate time, you can check with your local FSA office for additional information. We will be posting additional information on our website, www.cotton.org. In particular, this, this webinar presentation will be available. The Excel spreadsheets that I mentioned will be available. We will have a frequently asked questions document. We will include all the questions asked during the webinars and the answers. We'll also have uh, some YouTube videos of these presentations available as well. A few other things that we will include that I mentioned earlier, of course, are the ARC, uh, ARC examples, and then just how ARC and PLC would have paid historically. We'll also be keeping a document with the monthly estimates from NAS for the cottonseed and lint marketing and average prices so we can track the seed cotton marketing or average price throughout the marketing year. I want to thank you for participating in the webinar and thank you for your support of the National Cotton Council. We'll begin taking questions uh, via the chat windows, so please start typing them in if you have questions. So the first question, if you have generic base but no cotton planning history in the given years, then is generic base eligible to be converted to cottonseed base? And the answer is yes. Under option one, it is the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres or 80% of generic base. So in that example, 80% of generic would be converted to cottonseed base. And we've got a couple of more questions as well, uh, and we'll continue to take these questions. Uh, there was a question about if uh, if a farm is enrolled in the PLC program for seed cotton, is it eligible for purchase of the uh, supplemental coverage option or, uh, or SCO uh, for cotton? And, and yes, it would be, as provided it's uh, enrolled in the PLC for seed cotton, you would be uh, eligible to purchase uh, the uh, SCO for cotton in that case. Uh, another question that's come in is uh, whether or not if you have a farm that has been in CRP throughout the 2009 through 2016 period, will those acres be eligible to convert generic base on that farm or will they become unassigned base? Uh, and I'm not, that's a good question. I think that's going to be an implementation question because I'm not sure how this will will interact with parts of the 2014 Farm Bill that addressed uh, adjustment of base acres when you had an expiring CRP contract. So I wish I could give you a more definitive answer on that, but that's, uh, that's a question we will follow up on and in our frequently asked questions. Uh, the question about uh, will the 2018 seed cotton PLC payments be subject to sequestration? Uh, yes, unfortunately the answer to that question is yes. The same uh, the same sequestration percentage that applies to other uh, ARC PLC payments will apply to this, and to turn off that sequestration requires some broader budget agreement by Congress to, to be able to undo that. That's actually a, an issue that's outside of the Farm Bill uh, that would need to, uh, to undo that. 
Uh, there is a question about uh, the uh, ginning assistance um, that was also posed in terms of the cost share. That's an, that's an effort that we have been pursuing. I uh, want to thank uh, members of the cotton industry who have been working with us diligently on that for the past several months through uh, letters that we submitted to Secretary Perdue. Uh, we certainly know that's on his radar, uh, and, and we're hopeful that he will move forward with that. Uh, but no decision, no final decision has been made up to, up to this point, but uh, we think there's still a, a possibility that that ginning assistance can be made. If it does come about, it would be based off of 2016 planted and considered planted area. We understand, too, that if it, if it were to happen, it would probably be about half the total funding uh, uh, for that program as it was for the original uh, cost share ginning assistance program. So, again, we're we're hopeful in that regard, as I think, uh, you know, the secretary understands there's still a, a need out in the countryside that needs to be addressed immediately because even with this program being put in place for the 18 crop, it's going to, the payment schedules are going to follow the same timetable as other ARC and PLC programs, which means they will be, payments will be conveyed in October of 2019. Go ahead, Jody. So one question, does the 90-day window start February 9th or when FSA is ready? So the 90-day window does not necessarily apply to FSA implementation, is that correct, Gary? It is. Well, looking at legislative language, there's two 90-day windows about promulgating regs and then requiring the owner of a farm to allocate their base acres. Um, but the window started date of enactment, I guess is what we can say. Now, how quickly USDA can kind of move through this, we'll have to see. We know they're already meeting with committee staff, and, and so we know it's underway. And as a similar question, once FSA announces sign-up, do you know what the time limit will be for sign-up? And again, we don't, we don't have that information yet from FSA. Any others? There's yeah. another question about uh, the yield update uh, that was a uh, irrigated and dry land on the same uh, FSA farm number, and I'm not sure it was a, whether it was a simple average or a weighted average. I do know when we look back at the yield update provisions that were afforded to other crops in the 2014 Farm Bill, and we assume this will be uh, in the same manner. When it was averaged across the years, it was a simple average as opposed to a weighted average. Uh, now, if and I assume if they're, if they're using a simple average there, that that might also apply if you're doing uh, a single yield on irrigated and dry land. Uh, we'll verify that as well. Another question is, since the insurance sign-up has already passed for South Texas, Will there be any extension or grace period given to make adjustments? And I would say no, because for the 2018 crop year, you can have stacks and a PLC or ARC for the 18 crop year. So I do not think there would be any sort of extension or grace period. Now, one of the questions that just came through, and this is a particularly uh, uh, relevant question for South Texas, uh, has to do with the uh, disaster assistance that is included in the budget agreement, and uh, we don't want to, and we certainly uh, don't want to discount the importance of that disaster assistance because it is available for those areas that suffered hurricanes and, and wildfires, and uh, and will be applicable uh, to a lot of folks in South Texas. I would say, in general, USDA has some fairly broad discretion. Uh, in terms of how they're going to structure that disaster program. Uh, the, the guidance that they've been given, and, and we'll just kind of, and probably can't go much further down the details until we see how USDA implements it, but essentially disaster payments plus crop insurance indemnities plus market revenue cannot exceed 85% of the losses uh, if the crop insurance, if uh, the producer had crop insurance. So essentially it's, it's basically coming up to as if a producer had 85% coverage is how I would in general interpret that, that once they look at existing indemnities and market revenue and then add disaster payments, 
uh, that hopefully it brings a producer back up to 85 percent of uh, or the equivalent of what would be if they had an 85 percent coverage level. Uh, now there is all, and if it was if a producer did not have crop insurance, it's actually 65 percent. But uh, I think the acres that we're talking about is going to have crop insurance, and the 85 percent is going to be the relevant one. There is a requirement to purchase crop insurance in the next two years for those that uh, uh, used or received the disaster assistance. Uh, so again, as, as USDA moves forward, that's another thing out of this package that's going to be important and, and part of the reg process that they have to be going through. Uh, there's a question about um, uh, the program, how well it covers down to the to the loan level of cotton, and is there a gap between the, the loan level and the maximum payment? Uh, it's a little hard to, uh, uh, you know, say say with a definitive answer. But if you think back, or you have a chance to go back to some of the uh, matrices that were shown earlier that compared uh, the uh, that compared a, a lint price and a cottonseed price, and then calculated the equivalent seed cotton price, if you recall, when we had 51 cents as the lowest price on a market year average basis and then for Lent, and then we had $140 for uh, for cotton seed, I believe the the payment that or the price that was calculated for seed cotton was 25.6 cents per pound. And if you recall, the floor is actually 25 cents, which means the maximum payment is 11 Point seven cents, and that's applied to seed cotton pounds and just not and not lint pounds. So in fact, uh, it essentially is taking a producer down to the level of the loan, which is for the 2018 crop will be 52 cents. Uh, and in fact, by the time it, you max out, uh, the payment rate may go a, a, a cent or two below that. Another question is coming up about the 85% factor uh, that uh, Jody talked about in terms of the payment base acres or per acre payment. Uh, and, and the question is, and I think Jody, when you were doing that, that was that's just to calculate if you once your base acres are established, you're going to get the payment on 85% of base acres. So we were just trying to demonstrate what it looks like when it's spread across all a producer's base acreage. So the 85% is only applied once. We'll continue to watch the chat window in case there's any any other questions. And like I said, we will we will be updating these frequently asked questions. Uh, as well as providing those examples on ARC and, and any uh, ad additional information as it becomes available. We've got a question or two being typed in. Okay, so a question, can the generic base be reallocated to other crop bases if cotton had not been produced on those acres? And that would be yes. So under option two, you would, you would, reallocate, uh, you would reallocate to the covered commodities planted from 2009 to 2012. So you can only allocate it to other crop bases if those crops were planted during that time period. Or you can always choose option one, and that would be 80% of generic base would be uh, seed cotton base. A question just came in in terms of the uh, the acres and the yields uh, from the FSA webpage. Uh, now I'm not uh, where would that information be available? Obviously FSA will be the final uh, uh, the final answer or the final authority on where that information is. Will be available whether it's available electronically from their website or in the county office but FSA will be the source of uh, the acreage numbers that were certified over that 2009 to 2012 period I may have the 
I think it's an FSA form 578, but uh, if I have that number wrong, then I apologize for that. But it, they will be the source. Now, in terms of the yield data, uh, again, going back to the the uh, provisions or the practices that were in place in the 2014 Farm Bill, uh, FSA was working with RMA to uh, in an attempt to synchronize the information so that those uh, crop insurance yields, the same yields reported to RMA for crop insurance purposes, could be used uh, for purposes of the yield update information as well. And and so to the to the extent FSA and RMA have have combined that data together, it should be available. Producers can also use other information, uh, other production records, for example, or or other sources of data. Uh, it will just have to be verified if the producer's yield update records are, are audited. But one way to do it certainly is to, uh, uh, if, if FSA doesn't already have your RMA uh, insurance data, would your insurance agent provide that data to FSA? See, we've got a, a couple of another question coming in now that's being typed. The question came in, a farm that was in CRP from years 08 to 12, is it eligible? Uh, you know, part of that may be when did it come back out of CRP? Uh, now, if there's no, if, it, if, it's, if it's been out since then, uh, it certainly should be eligible for the, for the program uh, now, that, provided it's had some acreage planted on it, some covered commodity planted on it. What would likely be the case, though, if there is no production history in 08 to 12, which are the years used for the yield update, then the yield update option is, is likely not available to that farm. Uh, it would have, since it has generic base on it, it would have had a, a, a counter cyclical payment yield or previous payment yield for upland lint. But in the absence of production history or years that it's planted, then I don't think the a yield update option is going to be available on that farm. And the questions are starting to slow down. We're going to take the conference lines out of uh, lecture mode and see if there's any questions that uh, people need to want to bring over the conference line as opposed to the webinar. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. And we encourage folks, if you're not asking a question, just to uh, mute on your end, and that will reduce the background noise as well. Hearing we're not hearing any questions. We certainly want to be respectful of your time. Uh, we do appreciate uh, you joining this conference call and webinar. We hope this was beneficial to you. Uh, we will continue to update the information on a regular basis. Uh, and again, we are, we are making ourselves available uh, and reiterate again to contact uh, your member services representative. I think some of them are probably attending meetings today, uh, but also contact any of us, myself or any of us in the Memphis office or the Washington, D.C. office with any questions. Uh, we, are, we are happy to help. If we don't know the answer, we'll certainly research it out. So with that, I'm going to uh, close the webinar. Thank everyone again for, uh, uh, for their attendance uh, and wish you all the best in 2018. Thank you.